strike of a light pole. I just air it out and leave with the mic broke. Your micro, I'm hard body like Tyco. Heavy metal Chevys with nitro. Addicted to the vapors of paper. Hypnotic to the thirst. I'm pulling off criminal capers. I know the cocaine crackery stinks, but that's what it is. Surrounded by the khakis and mints. We move. Welcome back to Developer Commentary. My name is Mike Stout. And I am Tony Garcia. And today we're looking at Tyrannosis. Uh, That's right. We are looking at Tyrannosis. And we're all alone this week. Uh, no special guest stars. Yes. Moo has, has finally left to go back to England where he belongs. That's right. We got tired of his shit. <laughs> uh, Tony, do you remember anything about this level? Uh, I remember there's a boss fight at the end. Right. The mama Tyrannoid. And, uh, and this level is like battlefieldy for the most part, I think. That's all I know. I don't. I know the boss fight. I don't know anything else about anything. Oh, is this? But is this the level with the uh, the rockets that won the Snow Beast Award? Uh, they might be. Uh, when I see them, I'll know them. Okay. So, so we'll I should see how that goes. So I should try to do them all then. Uh, we'll do what you can. I'm sure. I think they're pretty early on. So. All right. Yeah. Okay, so let's let's get this going then. So, uh, uh, let's see who who or what haven't we talked about yet, Tony? Uh, you know who we haven't talked about that actually was asking for us to talk about him? Billy Parmenter. Billy Parmenter. Yes. Do you, yeah. I I remember Billy. Billy was a, a I think he was QA on this one, right? He was. Yeah, I think he just started. I think this was his first game in Insomnia. And now he's in uh, production or design, do you remember? Uh... Oh, see, now we're going to seem like lame friends. Well, this is what happens when you just <laughs> ask to get called out. I don't know. I mean, great guy, but I don't know what he's doing right now. <laughs> oh, oh, man. I think that reflects more poorly on us than anyone else. Yeah, so. yeah, I think so. Uh, Billy Beast Parmenter, one of our... I, I, he, uh... He worked with us He's a, a lot. He's a really good the... guy, though. I mean, I really liked working with him. Oh yeah, I'll say that. And uh, it, really great to work with on the uh, the forums and with the community and all that too. Yeah. So, I'm glad he's found success in Insomniac. Is all I'm saying about is what I could say about him. Got it. All right. Well, that's that's important. I know he's off in North Carolina right now too. Oh, is he? Uh, yeah, I think that's where he is right now. Oh, I didn't know he's that. He's off over there doing whatever they do over in North Carolina. Oh, we miss you, Billy. <laughs> That's right, he could have been over at your house hanging out and recording episodes, but instead he's off in the south doing whatever they do in the south. Making games or something, I don't know. Ah, who knows. <laughs> yes, so uh, uh, I guess the lesson we've learned today is do our research before we talk about people that ask to get talked about. No. No? I don't, I'm, I don't think that's a good lesson at all. You didn't? I'm, oh. not, gonna, I'm not gonna listen to that. Oh look, Tony, it's the throbbing teat. <laughs> I remember this room because I remember the throbbing teeth. <laughs> they they were much more throbbing and teat like I remember at the beginning. Back before we realized that that might be a problem, <laughs> that it was a throbbing teeth. Yeah, uh, I don't remember exactly why they ended up looking like throbbing teats, but I I do remember that there was a vast amount of ridicule levied on them. Look at this little cutscene. Oh, that. yeah, that's pretty hardcore. It's That's probably uh, probably Jared's work, yeah. I think this I was think so, yeah. I think this was his level. Yeah, I mean, um, I know he did the boss, and then I know he did the battlefields. So if there are battlefields, he totally did those. Oh yeah, this level's all ba battlefielded up. And uh, I remember fixing a lot of bugs on the Tyranoids. That was my contribution to this level, adding bugs. That's true. You added bugs to every level. Because I add bugs to every level I touch. Because your Tyranoids were in every level, so you pretty much Well, that's touched. how I had job security, right? They wouldn't dare get rid of me in, <laughs> in the middle of any project. If you had 3,000 bugs. Because I had so many bugs <laughs> that they wouldn't dare. I, under, I see. I didn't, I didn't realize that that was intentional. I thought it was all, uh, uh, oh, God damn it! I went backwards. Well, I mean, the, the flaw of that plan is at the end of every project, you end up having that meeting. It's like, you, you introduced a lot of bugs into this game. Maybe you should watch that. 
Yeah, maybe you should introduce less bugs into the game. <laughs> what, uh, um, so t about the Tyranoids, though, I mean, you probably had, uh, in order to get them to work in every level, given that we didn't have a uh, default pathfinding system or any kind of AI systems, like, what did you have to do to get them to work in every level? Like, what kind of bugs did you run into? Well, I mean, in the end, it came down to exposing tons of, tons of, sort of, uh, so, I don't know if we mentioned what key bars are. Okay, uh, probably not in this series, so we might as well go so, over them again. Basically, the way our editor worked, uh, just, I'm going to give you a quick history lesson of how the Maya editor used to work. All right. Um, you could place an object in the level which was in Maya, and then the programmer could go into the the code file of any particular object that gets placed and expose certain variables that can be adjusted per object in Maya. Right. So you could place one Tyranoid and then go into Maya and be like, well, this Tyranoid, I mean, as an example, you could mark it and say, make this Tyranoid orange. And then we could have put some code in the back end that would make the Tyranoid orange. All right. For that kind of thing. Yeah. So the end result of how I did most of those Tyranoids was just to expose a ton of PVARs to cover every possible case that we could have them in. Instead, so of, just, these... instead of just saying, if level equals seven, then Tyranoids are orange? Right, exactly. Because Moo would kick your ass. Moo would be very unhappy with that. Which is not a bad thing, but Moo doesn't like it. <laughs> so, I mean, there were a lot of ways, and it just got to the point where setting them up was a big task. And they would have these intro paths, that, and so you would set up pretty much each Tyranoid, and then it has its intro path when it runs out, and it just basically does a follow spline. And then it has a very specific area where it's told it's allowed to stay, and a specific area of how far it can run. And it just turned into a lot of looking at each, anytime an enemy went wrong, you would just go into that particular enemy and be like, all right, let's just adjust the intro path, let's adjust the area it's allowed to stand in, let's adjust the area that's allowed to chase you. And it was just a lot of fine tuning each individual enemy that was going wrong and being like, all right, let's expose some more stuff. Let's get some more variables out there that can sort of restrict its behavior is how most of that stuff got taken care of. So I, I remember that uh, in a lot of the levels, you would have problems with uh, enemies running into things and just sort of running in place, you know, like running into walls or, or small bumps on the floor. Uh, like, what, what kind of stuff did you have to do to fix that? Uh, well, I mean, it depends on what's going on. There's a couple ways that... So one of the things that gets, strangely enough, that gets them stuck on the floor is step up and step down height. Uh, and that's basically in our movement system. Uh, you can define what little bits of collision they're allowed to just walk over right. or yeah. step off of. Right, like for example, this pit of acid I'm in is almost one, or no, almost two meters high. Uh, yeah, almost two meters high. Ratchet himself so, yeah. was almost two meters high. Yeah. So yeah, you could define like, you know, don't walk off any ledges. So actually right here where you are, just let me look, just look really quickly. This could be a potential problem right here because all those little objects on the ground, they don't have collision. They have like little bits of collision just for have to ratchet stand on or whatever. Right. But that collision works as like when the enemy is trying to walk, it sees that the collision has changed levels, and it will be like, oh, this is you know half a meter off the ground. I can't walk up there. <laughs> and you're like, you're fucking kidding me. <laughs> and so. You have to adjust those little step-up heights to account for all those little craters and stuff to be like, all right, you you can step up 0.3 meters just so you can walk up on top of those things and walk down off of those things. And so that, I mean, that turns it, that, I mean, those little bits of collision just sometimes are, are out, out there on the world that you don't realize that they're there. And so they're just running and getting stuck up on stuff. And then when you actually look at it, you're like, oh, there's a little bit of lip of collision there. Uh, either we have to get rid of that, and for those kind of things, it might be like because if Ratchet walks into those, you'll see his feet totally clip into those. So sometimes, like, yeah, uh, like you'll notice in a few a few of the bigger ones, like his feet do these this weird kind of adjusting thing, so they don't clip as yeah. much in. Yeah. So, I mean, that's the kind of stuff where it 
to to any person looking, it'll be like they're just stuck up on nothing. But they're not on nothing. They're I mean, there's something there, and it's a matter of figuring out what that something is. And that, I mean, that that was a lot of the problem right there, where you just end up looking at the cushion, and you're like, all right, you know what? Let's just flatten out this whole area to try to make it a little bit easier to navigate. And then there was a there was also a problem with like uh, gaps, right? Where an enemy wouldn't necessarily know he had to run to the right to get around a gap. Right. Uh, I mean, and that's just pathfinding more than anything else. I mean, if you, if it's it's a difficult thing to do without any real pathfinding. Uh, I think one of the things that we did that helps a lot is you we were able to define uh, in paths um, sort of areas that they're not allowed to leave. And they would basically function as collision walls mm -hmm. for the enemies. Aww. And so, uh, oh, wow, you're all the way back. Uh, I was I was going to use that area as an example, but now we don't have that example anymore. I'll, I'll get back there. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I mean, since we could define these sort of areas as collision walls for enemies, uh, the what little one I tyrannoid back before actually did that. If people want to go back and look at it, but yeah. When the Tyranoid runs up to the edge, we kind of slide them along the edge. So even if they're running in a straight line at Ratchet when they're you know coming at the edge, they're kind of sliding on it a little bit. Right. And that kind of ends up pushing them sort of in that direction. So that they can get closer and closer to you by small degrees. Right, exactly. That makes sense. Uh, I remember once you also told me about... Uh, so given that they don't have you know uh, uh, sort of sophisticated an awareness of the world and the the spaces uh, how did you get them to not all clump up in the same space like when they were coming after ratchet um, so that one is again it comes down to people this was the errors but to look at like if you, you this yeah when you stand here they can that that one is stuck because it's not doing quite well but it's the same it's it's the whole basic idea you can just kill them just okay kill them. Let them die. um but yeah in terms of getting the swarmers not clumped up uh, there were a couple of things that we did but the favorite one that i had again it comes down to pvars and this one is actually a little bit of a pain to set up but it's pretty good when it gets working is if you have a bunch of enemies and they're all sort of in front of you and they all just charge in a straight line at you they're going to clump up as they get closer and closer to being in front of you. Right, because they're all trying to run at you, and it's more likely that they'll be in the same space. Right. So rather than run straight at the character, you can define an angle of like 10 degrees, 20 degrees or something, and say instead of coming right at the character, you know, cast the line straight at the player and then rotate it about 20, 15 or so degrees that stops them from just charging all right at the player, and each one will come at a different sort of arc at the player. And they won't end up in the same spot? Not as often, for sure. I mean, it's it's still possible for it to happen, but it's less likely, you know, if they're all in front of you, for them to all sort of wind up in the same location. Cool, yeah, I'll, I'll probably put some diagrams up during that part. Yeah, there's a lot going on <laughs> there, yeah. So, you know, pro programmer friends of the show, now you guys know how we did it. Just so you know, I was making all sorts of hand gestures when I was doing that, and it made sense <laughs> if you were looking at me. I made perfect sense. No, I, you know what? I I totally couldn't see the hand gestures, but it it you know, well, it was it was fine. It was good. <laughs>